Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to walk through a classic electronics problem step by step. Our goal is to find the voltage, which we'll call V0, at a specific point in the circuit shown on the screen. We'll be using a powerful technique called the superposition theorem. If you're new to circuit analysis, don't worry. I'll explain everything from the very beginning, making sure every step is crystal clear. Let's first take a look at our circuit. This is a DC circuit, which means the electricity flows in one direction. We can see several components. We have resistors, which are the zigzag lines, with values of 4 ohms, 5 ohms, 3 ohms, and 1 ohm. Resistors, as their name suggests, resist the flow of current. We also have two power sources, specifically, two independent voltage sources. One is a 9 volt source in the middle, and the other is a 3 volt source on the right. Our mission is to find the voltage V0 at the central node, which is the point where the 4 ohm, 1 ohm, and 3 ohm resistors all connect. The problem asks us to use the superposition theorem. So, what is that? The superposition theorem is a wonderfully simple idea. It says that in any linear circuit with multiple independent sources, like our two voltage sources, we can find the total effect by calculating the effect of each source one at a time, and then adding them all together. To consider each source one at a time, we have to turn off all the other sources. Here's how we do that. To turn off a voltage source, we replace it with a short circuit. A short circuit is just a plain wire with zero resistance. Think of it this way, a voltage source provides a voltage difference. A zero volt source provides no voltage difference, which is exactly what a perfect wire does. If we had a current source, which we don't in this problem, we would turn it off by replacing it with an open circuit, which is simply a break in the wire. So, our strategy will be First, we'll find the voltage at our target node caused only by the 9 volt source, while the 3 volt source is turned off. We'll call this voltage V1. Second, we'll find the voltage at that same node caused only by the 3 volt source, while the 9 volt source is turned off. We'll call this voltage V2. Finally, our total voltage, V0, will simply be V1 plus V2. So, V0 equals V1 plus V2. Let's begin with the first part, finding V1. To find V1, we need to keep the 9 volt source active and turn off the 3 volt source. As we just discussed, turning off a voltage source means replacing it with a short circuit, or a simple wire. Let's redraw our circuit. Everything stays the same, except the 3 volt source on the right is now gone replaced by a straight line connecting the 1 ohm resistor directly to the ground line at the bottom. The voltage at our target node in this new, simpler circuit is what we call V1. To find V1, we'll use a fundamental rule called Kirchhoff's Current Law, or KCL. KCL states that at any junction or node in a circuit, the total amount of current flowing into that node must equal the total amount of current flowing out. It's like a plumbing system, all the water that flows into an intersection of pipes must also flow out. We will apply KCL at the node where the voltage is V1. Let's assume that all currents are flowing out of this node and away from it. The sum of these currents must be equal to zero. Let's identify the paths for the current to flow out from our node V1. One path is to the left, through the 4 ohm resistor and then the 5 ohm resistor. These two resistors are in series, meaning they are connected one after another in a single line. So, the total resistance on this path is 4 ohms plus 5 ohms which equals 9 ohms. Another path is downwards, through the 3 ohm resistor. The final path is to the right, through the 1 ohm resistor. Now we need to write an expression for each of these currents using Ohm's law, which states the current is equal to voltage divided by resistance. The current flowing to the left is the voltage at our node, V1, divided by the total resistance in that path, which is 9 ohms. So, the current is V1 divided by 9. The current flowing to the right is the voltage V1 divided by the resistance in that path, which is 1 ohm. So, the current is V1 divided by 1. The current flowing downwards is a little different. It flows from the node V1 towards the 9 volt source. The voltage difference across the 3 ohm resistor is V1 minus the 9 volts from the source. So the current is V1 minus 9 divided by 3. Now, we set the sum of all these outgoing currents to zero according to KCL. V1 divided by 9, plus, 
v1 divided by 1, plus, v1 minus 9, divided by 3, equals 0. Let's solve this equation for v1. To get rid of the fractions, we can multiply the entire equation by the common denominator, which is 9. Multiplying the first term, v1 divided by 9, by 9 gives us just v1. Multiplying the second term, v1 divided by 1, by 9 gives us 9 times v1. Multiplying the third term, v1 minus 9, divided by 3, by 9 gives us 3 times, v1 minus 9, which expands to 3 times v1 minus 27. So our new equation is, v1 plus, 9 times v1, plus, 3 times v1, minus 27 equals 0. Let's combine all the v1 terms. 1v1 plus 9v1 plus 3v1 gives us 13 times v1. So, the equation simplifies to 13 times v1 minus 27 equals 0. Adding 27 to both sides, we get 13 times v1 equals 27. Finally, to find v1, we divide 27 by 13. So, v1 equals 27 divided by 13 volts. Now, it's worth noting that the calculation shown in the provided image for this first part seems to have a different and confusing setup for its equation, but it coincidentally arrives at the same correct result of v1 equals 27 over 13. The method we just walked through is the standard and correct way to apply KCL for this circuit. So, we have our first piece of the puzzle, v1 is 27 over 13 volts. Next, we need to find v2. This is the voltage at our target node caused only by the 3 volt source. To do this, we keep the 3 volt source active and turn off the 9 volt source. Remember, turning off a voltage source means replacing it with a short circuit, a plain wire. So, in our original circuit, the 9 volt source is removed and replaced with a wire. This means the bottom of the 3 ohm resistor is now connected directly to ground. The voltage at our target node in this modified circuit is V2. Once again, we'll apply Kirchhoff's current law, KCL, at the node V2. Let's define the currents. The image shows the current from the 3 volt source flowing into the node, and the other two currents flowing out of the node. According to KCL, the incoming current must equal the sum of the outgoing currents. Let's write the expression for each current. The incoming current, let's call it I1, comes from the 3 volt source. It flows through the 1 ohm resistor. The voltage difference is 3 volts minus V2. So, I1 equals 3 minus V2 divided by 1. One of the outgoing currents, I2, flows downwards through the 3 ohm resistor to ground. The voltage difference is V2 minus 0, since ground is 0 volts. So, I2 equals V2 divided by 3. The other outgoing current, I3, flows to the left through the 4 ohm and 5 ohm resistors. Just like before, these are in series, so their total resistance is 9 ohms. This entire branch is connected to ground. So, I3 equals V2 divided by 9. Now, we set up our KCL equation, incoming current equals the sum of outgoing currents. 3 minus V2 divided by 1 equals V2 divided by 3 plus V2 divided by 9. Let's solve this equation for V2. The left side is simply 3 minus V2. So, 3 minus V2 equals V2 divided by 3 plus V2 divided by 9. Let's move the minus V2 term from the left side to the right side by adding V2 to both sides. This gives us 3 equals V2 plus V2 divided by 3 plus V2 divided by 9. To combine the V2 terms, we need a common denominator, which is 9. V2 is the same as 9 times V2 divided by 9. V2 divided by 3 is the same as 3 times V2 divided by 9. And we already have V2 divided by 9. So, our equation becomes 3 equals 9 times V2 plus 3 times V2 plus 1 times V2 all divided by 9. Adding the terms in the numerator, 9 plus 3 plus 1 equals 13. So, 3 equals 13 times V2 divided by 9. To isolate V2, we can multiply both sides by 9, which gives us 27 on the left. 
27 equals 13 times V2. Finally, we divide both sides by 13. V2 equals 27 divided by 13 volts. We have found the second piece of our puzzle. V2 is also 27 over 13 volts. Part 3, the final combination. We're at the final step. The superposition theorem tells us that the total voltage, V0, is the sum of the individual voltages we calculated. V0 equals V1 plus V2. We found that V1 is 27 over 13 volts, and V2 is also 27 over 13 volts. So, V0 equals 27 divided by 13 plus 27 divided by 13. Since they have the same denominator, we just add the numerators. 27 plus 27 equals 54. So, V0 equals 54 divided by 13 volts. To get a decimal value, we can perform the division. 54 divided by 13 is approximately 4.1538. The solution in the image rounds this to 4.153. So, the final answer is that the voltage V0 in the circuit is approximately 4.153 volts. Let's quickly recap what we did. We started with a circuit that had two voltage sources. To find the voltage V0, we used the superposition theorem. We broke the problem into two simpler parts. First, we found the voltage contribution from the 9 volt source alone, which we called V1. Then, we found the contribution from the 3 volt source alone, which we called V2. In each case, we used Kirchhoff's current law and Ohm's law to solve for the unknown voltage. Finally, we added our two results, V1 and V2, to get our final answer for V0. This method allows us to tackle complex circuits by analyzing them one piece at a time. I hope this detailed walkthrough was helpful and made the concepts of superposition and circuit analysis easier to understand. Thank you for watching.